Hello and welcome to the Ice Guy, brought to you by the National Hockey Now Network. This is the show that takes you into the world of the National Hockey League. Every game, every day, from a betting perspective. With pro sports handicappers, Ian Cameron, Alex Beatsman, and various guests from the world of hockey and sports betting. And now, here's your host, Ian Cameron. Welcome to the Ice Guys, presented by National Hockey Now, Monday, December the 5th, Ian Cameron, and we've got a different feel, a different vibe, a different look to the show today. We've got some special guests helping me out in a pinch here. Alex B. Smith is away until Wednesday, so I said, you know what, instead of doing the show solo, which I don't mind doing, as everybody knows, it can, I can ramble with the best of them, and I can do a show by myself in, in my sleep here for 30 minutes or an hour or whatever, but I figured, you know what, let's open it up to some guests Let's give people the platform, the opportunity to show what kind of NHL betters they are and the knowledge and insight that they can bring to the table here on the show. And with that in mind, we've got two special guests joining me today, Nick Miranda uh, and Mikey, our good friend, of course, who's been in our chat, basically most shows, the majority of them, uh, and watches the show regularly. Good to finally have him with us as well uh, on the Ice Guys show. Uh, Nick, let's start with you. I just talk about your background, loving hockey as a fan, as a better, and all things in between. Great to have you. Yeah, thanks, Ian. I really appreciate it. Um, huge Islander fan. Had season tickets my whole life to the Islanders. Uh, been betting hockey for maybe three, four years now. Uh, not even just Islander games. I mean, I watch games all night, every single night. Any team doesn't matter. It's a good game to me. Um, yeah, just really excited to be on. Been a fan of the Ice Guys for a while. You, Alex, Jimmy um andrew last year and stuff you guys did some great work so just really enjoy the program absolutely great stuff and mikey better follow him on twitter by the way mikey great thoughts opinions uh places his bets every day posts his bets every day on uh twitter win lose or draw uh and uh knows his hockey loves the sport and has a lot of great you know statistics and lots of great tweets really informative really insightful for anyone that's interested in hockey betting so make sure you're following mikey mikey it's finally good but to have you on the Ice Guys show. How are you? Appreciate that, and I'm doing well. I'm doing well. Um, yeah, I've been trying. I know you do these shows every day. You're pretty popular. Um, it's nice to finally jump on and talk some hockey with you. Uh, this is my main sport. I mean, I dabble in baseball, baseball and football, football, but can you hear me okay, or am I echoing? You are echoing a bit, but we can hear you. Yeah. I got you. So, um, yeah, but looking forward to talking some pucks. All right, absolutely. Uh, good stuff. Uh, no camera for Mikey. He doesn't have one, but he's I said the audio is fine, so uh, good enough with that. So uh, looking forward to it. Let's get right in. Uh, I do want to comment on a couple things from the weekend. We're not going to do a full weekend recap because we do have a bigger card than normal, and unfortunately on Mondays as I'm pressed as fuck for time because I've got shows at 4 p.m. Eastern and 5 p.m. Eastern. It's just crazy for me on Mondays. But So it's briefly what I'm going to touch on from the weekend is a couple of the things I mentioned uh, from the weekend that took place. Uh, first of all, the Barube, what he said about Binnington. I think I said it a little bit yesterday. I agree. I'm, I'm glad he finally said something about baby Binnington, as I've called him. It's, it's time to, uh, it's time to uh, park the antics. I agree. You know, you're trying to body check people out of your crease now and, and, and you basically hit them when you, you know, you shouldn't do that as a goalie. Can't do that uh, as a goalie. Uh, you know, you're basically getting pulled, which means you're basically playing like shit and your team is, and you have the goal, even as you're playing like shit and getting pulled by your head coach to start mouthing off and, and jaw jacking with players from the other team on their bench. It's ridiculous. It's a, it's a pathetic look as far as I'm concerned. So for Craig Berube to finally put the foot down on Saturday after that loss to Pittsburgh and say, enough of the antics, play, just stop the puck. You know, that's your job. Just do it. Just shut up. Enough of the antics. You know, enough with uh, trying to fight other goaltenders. Enough with, you know, John at the other bench. Uh, enough with, you know, trying to get involved physically with players on the other team during the game, which you know you can't do. Yeah. Just shut the fuck up. Stop the damn puck. And Craig Berube finally had enough the other uh, day so I applaud him for that uh, no question about that uh, Sunday was a good betting day for me on the uh, show most of the bets were good ones uh, Dallas and regulation I thought that was that was the worst bet I made all day uh, and I thought it was dead and then they all of a sudden roar back tie at 5-5 and then only to lose in a shootout uh, to a uh, minute I'm actually glad they lost in a shootout because if they had won in a shootout, I really would have been upset but they lost anyway because I wouldn't have won the regulation bet even after it goes to overtime. But overall, it was a pretty good day. I mean, Winnipeg team total hits. We had Buffalo in the over against San Jose. 
Uh, they both came through. The Sabres were my best bet. Uh, the Islander puck line went came through against Chicago uh, last night. So pretty good overall uh, yesterday. We'll see if we can uh, carry that success and momentum forward to Monday. And we will begin with the uh, St. Louis Blues taking on the New York Rangers. Rangers minus 170, home favorites, five and a half the total uh, in this game. This is dog or pass for me because these two teams are both in a rut right now. Both of them are struggling with confidence at various areas of their game. Uh, you know, for New York Rangers, they don't have the puck enough. They're getting drilled on the faceoff dot. Uh, you know, their own defensive plays come under scrutiny. Can't protect leads. They blew it against Ottawa, of course. And then you see Chicago, is, of all teams, lights them up, puts five goals uh, in the net. Their defensive game, not great at the moment. Just not a lot of confidence with the Rangers right now. I'm certainly not interested in laying minus 170 with them, although you could say it's a leap of faith to back the St. Louis Blues as well. Losers of five of their last six games, including three straight against Dallas, Carolina, and Pittsburgh. Uh, Craig Berube has just ripped their penalty kill. He called it horseshit the other night after the loss against Pittsburgh, and it has been horseshit. Three goals allowed in the last two games by that penalty kill, which is now all of a sudden for St. Louis fallen uh, to tw 30th in the NHL in terms of the penalty kill, which is not something you expect from the uh, St. Louis Blues. It also hurts that one of the best players on the team lately is battling an illness, and he's uh, missed uh, uh, the last game for them, Jordan Cairo. That has not helped the uh, Blues situation either. But, you know, two struggling teams, to me, it, you take the dog and you hope for the best or you pass the game. That's what you do in a spot like this because I definitely can't trust the uh, Rangers right now laying a buck 70. I might sprinkle a couple bucks on the Blues just because of the price, but it's nothing I'm overly rushing to the window to bet. Same thing with the total. Could go either way. Uh, at five and a half, I'm always leaning over. Uh, in any NHL game, I'm leaning over the total five and a half. And like I said, the Blues are giving up five, uh, four, four, six, and six goals in their last four games in fact if you go back before that they gave up five to tampa six to buffalo they've gone five and one to the over in their last six games rangers are suddenly trending uh, to the over at a three and two clip in their last five games i five and a half i definitely lean over this total but the one thing that does concern me is barube calling out the defense calling out the penalty kill do they really try to tighten things up tonight on that at that end of the ice given the struggles that they are having defensively right now they might but Still might be able to get, in my opinion, this game to go over the total. Binnington for the Blues, Shesterkin for the Rangers, confirmed as your starting goaltenders tonight. Let's see how Binnington responds. That was your coach calling you out for your bad performance and your bad behavior, essentially, uh, on the ice uh, on a Saturday night. I'm fascinated. That's the most fascinating element of this game to me, guys. What do we get from Binnington tonight? You know, you, you're playing poorly. The antics are clearly your coach is fed up with them. What do you bring to the ice tonight for the St. Louis Blues, a struggling hockey team? Uh, Nick, we'll start with you. Uh, what do you think here, Blues Rangers? Yeah, I totally agree. Can't lay minus 170 with the Rangers right now. Um, plus 150, not a bad price for the Blues, but like you said, can't really trust them either. But price is kind of right. I think if I had a lean in the game, I would probably just go over five and a half, talking about the total, like you said. We're seeing a lot of six and a halfs all over the board. So to see a five and a half like that with the Rangers at MSG, I mean, you talked about the Blues power play struggling, that Rangers power play, they could score in bunches sometimes. So I'd probably lean over five and a half. All right, Nick, leaning toward the over. Uh, Mikey, what do you think here? St. Louis, New York. I mean, the Rangers at minus 170, it's a little bit ridiculous. Like you said, both clubs in bad form. Um, this Rangers team has some issues. They look lifeless out there. They struggle getting out of their own end. Uh, when they do, they just dump the puck only to lose it again immediately. There's no rhyme or reason to their offensive structure. I think Shesterkin masked a lot of issues with this team last year, and now that he's just playing decent, they're getting exposed. Um, this Rangers team started the season 2-0. They beat Tampa. They beat Minnesota since then. They've won nine games, only nine wins for this Rangers team since October 13th. And those wins came against the bottom of the barrel teams, or in your case, Ian, the Sisters of the Poor, uh, Anaheim, Dallas, Arizona times two, Philly, Detroit, San Jose, Kings, Ottawa. Those are the teams that the Rangers have beaten. Like you said, it's dog or pass. I considered St. Louis at 150. 
But that team is in a funk as well. If you watched the uh, Chiefs post-game interview after that loss to Pittsburgh, he wasn't happy with all aspects of the game. And I personally think he's done he's done with Bennington's shenanigans. I mean, Bennington's actions make him more and more unlikable. It's like he's trying to be the bad boy of hockey, and it just doesn't suit him. Um, it seems like it's either take a small shot on St. Louis or stay away completely. Uh, one thing I have noticed over the last few years since Chief took over as head coach, I feel like the Blues usually step up after one of those Chief rants slash unhappiness where he's calling out the team. It's tough. You have two desperate, hungry, wounded animals looking for that bowl of food, and that's something I usually don't like messing with. From a betting perspective, both St. Louis and the Rangers, they've won one game in the last two weeks. So it's a pass for me. It wouldn't surprise me if this is a 2-2 type of game in the third period. Um, but uh, just one thing with Igor against St. Louis, 0.857 save percentage, 5.25 goals against average, allowed seven goals, both starts coming last year. Yeah, those are ugly numbers, uh, definitely. And uh, even more... Uh, of a wow hazardous situation when you think about it when you're a minus 170 favorite like uh, the New York Rangers are here uh, in this game uh, as far as the uh, props go again I've always I've, I've hammered the Jimmy BC point that he's up on the top line he's getting chances we've been waiting for the puck to go in for him finally it has at least at, on a couple of occasions started to so we'll see if they uh, shake up the lines a little bit here tonight he's still uh, the tally Kratzov someone to consider too because he just came back from injury and he's had opportunities. He did have the goal against Ottawa uh, on home ice before that. So those are some options there for the uh, uh, for the New York Rangers. As far as the uh, Blues go, Cairo looks like he is going to be back tonight. Yeah, he is returning to the lineup for the uh, Rangers. I'm just looking at that now. Just wanted to update that. So he's back. He'd be someone I'd target from a goal prop because he was the guy that was really leading the way, carrying things offensively for the Blues before he missed the last game. Robert Thomas got praise from Barube as well after the last game against Pittsburgh. So he's one of the few guys that's shown up for us lately. So maybe you look at a, uh, at least some points props. He's not a big goal scorer lately, but still four points in the last four games for Robert Thomas. Maybe you look at some points props for him tonight for the uh, St. Louis Blues in this one. All right, let's move to Colorado and Philadelphia. We've got the uh, Avalanche minus 200 road favorites, five and a half the total. This total also moved down. It opened six and it's down to a five and a half year. I'm really not going to overthink it. Teams that are better than Philly, teams that are in a spot where they're not going to look past Philadelphia should beat Philadelphia. And, and I think that's probably what you're going to get here from the Avs. Can't be thrilled with losing to the Boston Bruins. There's no shame in losing to Boston, who haven't lost on home ice, obviously, all year. But the fashion they did, thoroughly whipped, thoroughly dominated, thoroughly outshot, outplayed, outchanced, outworked, all that was basically on display Saturday night in that 5-1 loss to the Boston Bruins. Uh, Colorado will be looking to bounce back from that. You look at their recent performances off defeat. They lost to St. Louis, beat Carolina the next game, lost to Vancouver, beat Dallas the next game, shut out by Winnipeg, beat Buffalo the next game. So we know this team's a response team. Philadelphia is still just the one win in their last 10 games. Uh, valiant effort against New Jersey. In fact, 33 to 18, shooting, uh, out shooting New Jersey in that game, but losing three to two. Uh, the Devils capitalizing on their chances. Uh, and, Phil, and John Tortorella wasn't having it here in the negativity from the media after that game. He had one of those classic moments where they were saying, oh, are you happy with the effort? You know, it's another loss. What do you think you, you got to shake things up? He says, you're asking stupid questions. Uh, classic torts. Uh, he, he's really going above and beyond the call of duty to protect his team from shield his players from criticism. That's what he's doing because he sees, you know what? Why am I going to throw these players under the bus? This is year one of a long rebuild. We don't have a team that can compete nightly and beat really good teams. I'm not going to throw them under the bus. We're trying hard, and I do believe him when he says that, that the work ethic, we're playing our ass off is the words he used after the game against New Jersey. He's right. The work ethic is there. They try to play the right way, hard, tenacious, good on the forecheck. You know, they have instances where they've got the opposing team hemmed in but the problem is they don't have that elite level finish. They don't have the game breakers offensively to turn an offensive zone shift, you know, for a minute and a minute and a half. When I've seen this from the Flyers. They get a team hemmed in. They're doing all the right things, the forecheck. They're cycling the puck. They're generating sustained pressure in the offensive zone, but they don't get anything out of it. They, they get a weak scoring chance and barely a goal out of it ever. 
And that's the thing. You cannot overcome the deficiency in the skill quotient, in the ability, in the pure talent quotient that is lacking uh, on this Philadelphia Flyers team. So you can do a lot of good things, possessing the puck, controlling the play, getting opportunities in the offensive zone. But at the end of the day, you're not good enough in terms of your high-level skill quotient to finish those chances and put the puck in. And that's the issue the Flyers are running into right now. So I'm not going to overthink this or complicate this. I like Colorado in regulation here. You can get that close to a minus 120 or so. Uh, Georgiev and Hart are going to be the uh, goaltenders confirmed in this game. Uh, Cam Atkinson, uh, it's it's uh, a guy that's been, we're talking about him returning, but he's still, it looks like, day-to-day for the uh, Flyers uh, and may not be ready yet. Of course, still without Couturier. Uh, and others up front. They did get Konechny back, which was a good thing uh, the other night. So, And he's been one of their better offensive players. You know, it is still very much, like I say, a, a Colorado team dealing with some injuries, including Manson on the blue line is a big one. They've been without Byram for a while, still without Rodriguez. Lekkonen's now out. You do have to factor in there are some injuries mounting for Colorado, which is concerning, but we know there's teams got depth. There's going to be a shakeup in the lineup. Alex Newhook, from a prop standpoint, is definitely the target for me. Looks like he's going to, he moved up to the top line for a bit against Boston. He's going to be starting tonight on the top line with McKinnon and Ranton. And you know that is going to be, leave him purely undervalued from a prop standpoint in terms of goals and points. So I'm definitely targeting the Newfoundlander, Alex Newhook, playing on the top line tonight with McKinnon and Ranton. Uh, keep an eye on that Cogliano, Confer, O'Connor line. They've been pretty good lately offensively for the Avs. So you might get something from them. Uh, I like Colorado in regulation, though, even with Lekkonen out. That's a loss, but Lekkonen's offense has kind of slowed down the last few games. New hook going up to that role. Hungry player. think you see a good effort from him. He's capable. He's very fast as well, like everybody on this Colorado team. So I think he'll fit in well in the short term with McKinnon and Ranton and on that top unit. Uh, Nick, uh, actually, you know what? We'll ch- switch it up. We'll start with Mikey on this one. Uh, Colorado and uh, Philadelphia. Yeah, spot on, Ian. I locked in abs in regulation. I got minus 136 last night. Um, I also locked in Philly team total under two and a half at $1.15. Since November 1st, Flyers played 17 games. They've scored two goals or less in 13 of those 17 games. Colorado's defense ranks top 10 in goals allowed per game. They're averaging right around 2.6. And you also have Gorgiev, who has tons of experience against his Flyers team. He's uh, His save percentage is .943. 1.62 goals against average. He's allowed 13 goals in those eight starts against Philly. That's an average of 1.6 goals allowed per game when he faces the Flyers. He's got the experience against his Flyers team, playing the same Metro division as them when he was with the Rangers. Colorado's also returning into that form like they were in last year off a loss. They're 3 0 in November off a loss. Like you said, Ian, back in mid November, lost 3 2 to St. Louis, came back and beat Carolina. Lost 4-3 to Vancouver, beat Dallas 4-1. Lost last week 5-0 to Winnipeg. Next game beat Buffalo 6-4. This team is off a 5-1 loss to Boston the other day. Listen, they're facing a Philly offense that ranks dead last in the NHL. 2.3 goals per game. This should be a 4-1 type of win for Colorado. Um, One more thing, Carter Hart's numbers are absolutely bottom-of-the-barrel trash against Colorado. 0-2 0-2 in his career, 0.885 save percentage, 4.62 goals against average. He's allowed nine goals in those two starts. One of them was last year where he allowed uh, six goals. So Philly team total under two and a half, abs in regulation. There you go. Uh, Philly under team total and also the abs in regulation for our guy Mikey in this one. Uh, Nick, well, what do you like in here, abs and flyers? Yeah, I grabbed the uh, the total at six before it moved to five and a half. So under six, I think, is a good bet tonight. I don't think, like Mikey said, we're going to see a lot from the Philly side. Maybe maybe a 3-1, 4-1 type game, hopefully, we can see. And then, like you said, I saw it today, too, the new hook prop. I saw him on the top line, plus 125 to record a point. I think that's a great price for a guy playing with Ranton and, and McKinnon. So new hook to record a point, and I'd go under six. All right, under the total as well here. You're right, the, de- the depth is getting tested, and they have depth in forwards and defense. There's no question, but we're talking now. You're, Jean-Luc Foodie, who's been in the lineup lately, he's out as well. Now you lose Lekkonen. You're already without Rodriguez, and you're without Darren Helm, who's a depth forward for you. 
Uh, and then on the blue line, as much depth as you have there, you're down McDermott, Byram, and now Manson on the blue line. That's mm-hmm. getting tested a little bit, no question about that. But the way I see it is you're playing Philly. You're off a loss. You've been good off a loss. You're the better team. And I'm seeing the Leafs, of all teams, with four starting defensemen out, winning games left and right, and almost beating Tampa the other mm-hmm. night with multiple critical defensemen out. And they've managed to hold the thing together and actually win hockey games. Why can't Colorado do that? Uh, yeah. Certainly, I think they you, can you, here tonight. Still got, you still got your puck movers yeah. and McCarr and Tays and Gerard in the lineup. I mean, that's where they're generating their their speed from and their transition game a little bit. So I don't expect them to struggle mightily in that fashion. Uh, maybe putting the goals in the net besides McKinnon and Ranton, and they may struggle a little bit. Hence, I think why I like the total a little bit. But I don't expect Colorado to struggle as much as maybe one would think. Yeah. Yeah, we will see. And like I say, we'll see if the te- theory is true. Team that's motivated to beat Philly is better than Philly will beat Philly. It happened with Jersey. wasn't pretty for Jersey, but and they got the win in the end. We'll see if Colorado does tonight as well. Uh, all right, next up, as we continue along, the game of the night, in my opinion, in the NHL, the Bruce Cassidy Bowl. Uh, we had the Matthew Kachuk Bowl last Tuesday with Florida and Calgary. Now we've got it with Vegas and Boston tonight. Uh, Vegas, uh, plus 160 underdogs. Boston, as high as minus 180 home favorites here uh, in this game. And the total currently sitting at uh, six pretty much across the board in this one. It's pretty much the same way I felt about Saturday, right? I mean, although I did did take a shot with Colorado, a small shot Saturday. I, I, I lean Vegas here, but and the coaching side of this does matter a little bit. Like Vegas probably wants to go into Boston, end the home winning streak of the Bruins, and win one for the Gipper, so to speak, for Bruce, who apparently it's gotten off to a glowing start for him with the goal. The players apparently love him or early on. All the quotes have been positive from Vegas goal, the Knights players, about Bruce Cassidy being their head coach. I'm sure they'd love nothing more than to help Bruce get a win in his return to Boston, the team that canned him. Uh, pretty much unceremoniously as well uh, in the uh, off season. So uh, that's definitely incentivizing Vegas, but at the same time, ba- Boston just finds a way to win. And especially at home, unblemished on the season. Uh, and they're looking more and more impressive. I mean, I know Colorado, we just said they've got some guys out, but to dominate Colorado, beat them five, one, you got to give the Bruins a hell of a lot of credit for that. So I'm not in the most urgent rush. If I bet anything on Vegas, it'll be peanuts. Definitely won't be best bet material, but, Boston is, keeps on finding ways to win here, uh, playing well at home. You know, there's those couple games they played Chicago and Philadelphia at home. They were kind of lackluster. Uh, even though it actually was 10-2, to 2, the combined score of those games, I thought the Philly game, they were slow to start. Even the Chicago game, same thing. And then they poured it on. They had a couple of close calls. The Tampa game was pretty close at home. The Carolina game, they won in overtime. That's about as close as anyone's gotten to beating Boston uh, at the TD Garden this year. But at the end of the day, I love what I'm seeing from the Bruins in terms of, and I like that they're getting the uh, secondary third lines chipping in. It's not all on the plate. A big part of it is still Marshawn, Bergeron, DeBrusque, uh, Pasternak, those players. Krejci's been good, but Taylor Hall's chipping in from that third line. He's been playing well lately for them. The blue line's fully healthy now with Lindholm and McAvoy, Grizzlick and Carlo, Forbert and Clifton, uh, Allmark and, and Swayman. You got to throw Swayman into the he's playing well mix because he played great against Tampa Bay uh, last week for the uh, Bruins. So you got both goalies going now, Allmark and Swayman playing well. Pizza money, perhaps for me on Vegas. Other than that, not a strong opinion on this game. Uh, what do you think here, Nick? Vegas, Boston. Yeah, uh, unlike you, I feel a little stronger about it. I do feel strong about Vegas tonight. Plus 160. I think it's a great price for a team that's going to play really hard for their coach that got like all last season from Boston. So I just think it's a really good opportunity for them situationally. Um, streaks are meant to end, right? Eventually the home streaks got to end at some point. So uh, yeah, I'd go Vegas. And I saw Eichel skating at morning skate this morning. Game time decision. Uh, yeah. yeah. Hometown, uh, home state, Massachusetts, plus 198 to score a goal. If he's in the lineup, I'd, I'd sprinkle Eichel to score a goal too. That's a great point. Close to home. Uh, yeah. He's a North, uh, North Chelmsford boy. Yeah. Uh, they're yep. in uh, Massachusetts. So Jack Eichel close to home. Uh, got to think family and friends will be there at the TD Garden tonight. Uh, and yet he's a game time decision to play because he got banged up against Detroit Saturday night, departed that game early at lower body injury. So we'll have to see if he's in there. And you're right. That's always the kind of situations you love to maybe capitalize on prop wise when Eichel is playing close to home. You know, uh, family and friends in attendance, uh, a spotlight game like this. You're trying to beat the Bruins who are unbeatable 
so far this year at home has all elements of a good Jack Eichel prop game, but is he even going to suit up? And we're going to have to wait on that because they say game time decision. We'll know in the pregame skate 30 minutes uh, before puck drop, probably when we'll find out. Uh, Mikey, he's the Bruin guy of the bunch. He knows this team inside and out. He's got his ear to the ground when it comes to the Boston Bruins, kind of like Jimmy Murphy when he joins the show. Uh, Mikey, what do you think? Vegas, Boston. Yeah, I locked in under six and a half at a dollar eighteen last night. I know it moved to six. Um, I would still play it at six. Um, I totally understand where you guys are coming from. And if getting plus one sixty on Vegas, you may see this pretty much maybe never again uh, this season. If it was any other team besides Boston, I would one hundred percent be taking a shot against Vegas. But from a side perspective, this is extremely difficult. I, I wouldn't price the Bruins as high. I know they've been unbelievable. They've been great at home, but 160 on Vegas. Like, how do you not take a shot with that? Um, I'm sticking with the under six and a half. These are two of the top three teams in the NHL, and they face each other tonight and again in six days in Vegas. So much of the story surrounding this game is Cassidy's return to Boston. You'll hear things like, does he want to stick it to his former team? Do the Beast players want to show off and show him how good they are without him? In my personal opinion, it's all nonsense. It's all water cooler talk. Maybe his message and approach got stale over the years in Boston, but listen, I believe the majority of the players, especially the core, respected him. He has the respect um, of Bruins fans as well, at least with me. I think he did a good job. Um, it's rare these days having coaches last more than a few years, especially with younger and younger kids playing in the NHL. Um, things are just different nowadays. I think he did a good job and it was just time for a new voice. He spent six years with the Bruins and many years before that with the Providence Bruins. He knows these players and he knows this roster better than anybody. Um, I think he'll know how to slow down the Pastas, the Bergerons, and the Marchands. I think he'll know how to work around the McAvoys and the Grizzlicks and the Carlos. I think he'll know how to work around Sway and Ulmark, whoever decides to get the nod. It's been rumors galore. First, it was Sway was off the ice first. Now it's Allmark is off the ice first. Jack Eichel may not play. Personally, I think there's a little bit of some mind games, chess work being played here. Um, I'm expecting a feel them out, careful, not exactly rolling the dice with high percentage chances early on, and a slow start to this first period. Both teams feeling each other out. And I'm not expecting this high-paced back-and-forth games with goals being traded. You have two solid defensive structures. You have two solid goaltenders. Both defenses rank top 10 in goals allowed per game. Vegas ranks 7th, only allowing 2.6. Boston ranks 1st, only allowing 2.1. This has a 3-2 feel with possibly an empty net goal at the end. Um, these teams have met eight times since Vegas entered the NHL back in 2017. Out of those eight games, six stayed under. Now, the meeting in a few days in Vegas will be a different story, but in this one, I'm not expecting a high-scoring game. So under 6.5, minus 118. All right, under the total. A little bit of a playoff intensity, especially at the defensive end of the ice. Quite possible. Mikey thinking that will be the case, like in the under here in this one. All right, Washington and Edmonton. We've got the Oilers minus 165 home favorites, uh, total six and a half here uh, in this one. Uh, Edmonton, I, I like Edmonton in regulation a little bit here. Uh, I took Calgary in regulation the other night against Washington. I'm still not really liking anything I'm seeing out of the Capitals, I'll be quite honest with you. I mean, they blew the game against Seattle that they could have won. Their only victory in the last four games was against Vancouver who, to be honest with you, since they returned from that brilliant road trip, remember they beat Colorado and Vegas back-to-back -back games on the road? They came back home, and they haven't played great. They only escaped with a win against Arizona the other night, the Canucks. So I don't even give Washington a ton of credit for the 5-1 win uh, against the Canucks. So it's a team that I just don't love what I'm seeing, and they, they badly miss. And I've said this over and over again. Dmitry Orlov, you could talk all you want about how they've had issues without Backstrom and without Haglin and Wilson. And they obviously missed Oshie earlier this season for a period of time. Well, now you've got major problems. You've got Dmitry Orlov on IR. Your defense has struggled even more since he's been out. He's your best defensive defenseman. Now Martin Fehervari is on IR. It's not like this team's loaded with tons of uh, quality depth on the blue line anymore, especially good defenders on the blue line. And now Fehervari's on IR. That's concerning. And now you lose Darcy Kemper. 
not expected to suit up upper body injury day to day. It's not something that's long term as of right now, but still an upper body injury for Kemper won't be playing tonight and he'll miss some time. It's going to be Charlie Lindgren in net. And Charlie Lindgren's actually fought the good fight for the Capitals in net. He's actually been better at times than I expected, but not so much late. You look two of the last three games, he's given up uh, four goals or more in each of his last two starts, St. Louis and New Jersey. He uh, replaced uh, Kemper uh, against Calgary, gave up uh, two goals on nine shots in that game. He's now got just a 3.51 goals against average, 890 save percentage uh, on the season. Uh, you know, trending downward in his recent form is Charlie Lindgren in net. I think Edmonton, and Edmonton too, it's just like Calgary the other night. Calgary lost in Washington. So I said they'll probably look to avenge that loss, and I think they will. They did. Same thing with Edmonton. They lost 5-4 in Washington last month. I think they avenged that. I think Edmonton's starting to build, starting to get their shit together uh, a little bit. They still have their moments where their the, the lapses defensively hurt them. Their only loss in the last five games was against Minnesota in a tough spot back-to-back after playing in Chicago the night before. I think Edmonton in regulation is the way to go, and I'm definitely going to look over the total as well, six and a half. We've got Edmonton, five straight overs. We've got Washington now that I think defensively, Fahervari out hurts. Orlov still out. That hurts significantly. They're giving up goals in bunches uh, you know, more often than not, uh, and uh, series history has trended that way as well. Four straight overs between the Capitals and Oilers head-to-head. So Edmonton in regulation and over six and a half for me. Uh, Mikey, how about you here? Washington, Edmonton. Yeah, I feel like it's either Edmonton or Reg or take the over. At first, this seemed like a Washington spot. They usually don't go more than two or three games without a win. But I had to lay off with Charlie Lindgren in that. He's allowed three or more goals in six out of his uh, last eight starts slash appearances. The Caps just can't seem to get all the troops healthy and in the lineup. They've also been on the road since November 26. That's over a week that they, that's been, they've been on the road for over a week, and they still have two more road games. The schedule makers didn't do Washington any favors. They'll be on this road trip for two weeks before coming home. And then when they do come home, they have one day off before they face Seattle at home. Then they go back on the road and head to Winnipeg and Chicago. It just doesn't make any sense. It's very strange. I'll be interested in taking a look at Seattle on Friday, depending on the odds. Um, I don't have a play on this game. Um, real quick with Lingren, 1-0 against Edmonton, but .862 save percentage, 4.00 goals against average. Uh, Skinner, not good numbers either. Uh, 0.839 save percentage, 5.09 goals against average. He allowed those five goals back on November 7th in Washington. I'm praying for a very scoreless first half of the first period and try and get this over five and a half live. A good strategy because uh, oftentimes all you have to do, even with totals of six and a half, is, and, we, and we've illustrated this many times on the live betcast, which, by the way, will be back next Tuesday. December 13th will be our next live betcast. All you got to do is wait four or five minutes and get four or five minutes of scoreless hockey in the first period, and you'll get a five and a half, and you can definitely take advantage of that for sure. And, yes, it is indeed uh, Stuart Skinner uh, in that here for the uh, Edmonton Oilers tonight once again. It's not a shock. I mean, he's clearly supplanted Jack Campbell for now until Campbell gets his uh, confidence back. There's even some talk with the Oilers. They may even send him down to the AHL. Uh, for a little bit to just get some confidence back. He'll be able to play down there every game, try to get some, you know, again, get his confidence back because he's clearly shaken right now uh, for the uh, Edmonton Oilers. So it is Skinner for now. And I want to point out too about Skinner, which I think should help the over here is, you know, he hasn't been shutting it down like he was, say, a month ago. You look at his last five starts and slash, slash appearances, three, five, three, four, three. He was giving up three plus goals now in five straight. So, uh, I think that definitely another reason why uh, looking over and for some goals to be scored tonight. A Nick, lot of oh. questionable goals too, Ian. Excuse yeah. me. Go ahead. Yeah, it's exactly. He's not. You're, I, you see the same thing, Mikey. Yeah, not nearly as on top of his game as he was a month ago, Skinner. Even though he's still the better option than Campbell, his 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 form has declined just a little bit here in the last few weeks. Nick, what do you think here? Capitals, Oilers. Yeah, I think you got to look to the Oilers side here. I'm looking at the total for the Oilers over three and a half. Uh, I think we want to look at that. Just trust the Oilers in this spot. Like Mikey said, bad scheduling spot for the Capitals. A lot of guys out. You mentioned Faravari out now, along with Orov. They've just never been able to get over this injury bug, it seems like, the whole year between 
Connor Brown, Tom Wilson, Nick Backstrom, uh, Faravari, Carlson was hurt, Orlov. It just now Kemper also. It just time and time again they can't overcome it. It seems, and it just seems like a good spot for Drysaddle and McDavid to just have a night, have a big night. So I'm looking at over three and a half for the Oilers. All right, T- uh, Oilers team total over three and a half for Nick. All right, next up we've got Arizona, the road weary desert dogs. Uh, taking on the uh, Calgary Flames, uh, Arizona or Calgary minus three forty uh, home favorites uh, in this one. The total six across the board. I still think playing overs with Arizona might be worth a look. I, I don't love it, but I did take an over six in this game tonight. It fell short with Vancouver. I still think as you get more tired, as you're at the dead last little stretch here of this long ass road trip, which has been forever. Finally, the Calgary Flames after uh, the. Uh, Edmonton game to, uh, on uh, Wednesday night are finally going to be able to go home and play at Mullet Arena. But, you know, they're running on fumes. They're giving up a lot of shots now on a nightly basis, something that wasn't happening earlier in the road trip. I mean, you look at the early part of November, Islanders, Devils, Rangers, they're giving up 20s with shots on goal. They're giving up 30s and even in some games 40s, you know, as they're just tired. They're worn out. It, it takes a lot of mental and physical energy to play defense play in your own zone, and uh, Arizona's expending a lot of energy right now with that. So I'm going to take a shot here with over the total of six here, Calgary and uh, Arizona. And it is worth noting in terms of this total, yeah, we saw 9-1 with Calgary the last time these teams played. It was April last year, and it was an ugly game for the Coyotes. 9-1 it ended in favor of the uh, Calgary Flames. That was during that time when you know Arizona at that moment was just, you know, terrible and a lot we were people were just fading them it seemed every game down the stretch last year there's a much more hard trying arizona team but you look at the status of their roster uh coming into a tonight uh you know it's still a team that's been on the road forever and i think the return actually believe it or not of jake chikrin who is probably going to get moved before the deadline he's returned midway through this road trip this will be a seventh game back since uh joining the team you've seen a little more punch offensively in this team I mean, you look at the scores in Arizona games since he's been back. And just a guy that can move the puck, good puck mover, get the get the rush going up the ice from the blue line. He in, in the games that he's been back, the six games we've seen, four of those games have seven goals or more. Four three Nashville, four three Detroit, four three Minnesota, five three the LA game, and that three two game against Vancouver the other night. It had many chances to get over the total, many, uh, and unfortunately. You know, the puck just wasn't going in toward the uh, latter stretches of that game. And usually when you lose an over these days in the NHL, a lot of it is the chances are there, opportunities are there, power play chances are there, and the puck's just not going in for some reason. I find more of my over losses are that than they didn't generate anything. A lot of it is they generated a lot. They generated a shit ton. The puck just wasn't going in. That's how I find I lose the majority of my overs. But I think I'm going to take a shot here with this one over six. And I might do a split between that and and the uh, Calgary team total over three and a half. It's a little pricey, minus 150, but might do a split bet there. Full game total over Calgary team total over three and a half. Uh, Nick, how about you here? Coyotes, Flames. Yeah, I'm with you. I like over six a lot. That's a, that's a good number. Um, even if we see a 3-2 game, maybe we got a push with an empty netter. So, um, yeah, I'm good with six on the total sides. I mean, bad spot for the Coyotes. Like you said, I can't trust, even though that's nice at a plus 280 price, can't trust that. And then just laying minus 340, obviously not going to happen with Calgary. So I would stick with over six, the total. Um, Hope we get some goals from the Calgary side. And as I always say, I mean, yeah, Calgary minus 340. I don't want any part of that. I'm sure a lot of people don't want any part of that, even if they think Calgary's going to win the game. And I always say, why lay minus 340 on that when you could go with my over three and a half minus 149 right now at Pinnacle? Yeah, is it the greatest price on that team total over? No, but minus 149 is still a whole hell of a lot better on your bankroll than minus 340, Uh, that's for sure. So I always look at the team total more than anything else if I'm going to endorse a very large favor to this magnitude. Uh, What do you think here, Mikey, Coyotes and Flames? Yeah, just an outrageous price on uh, Calgary. Minus 340 is just ridiculous, even against Arizona. This is extremely overpriced. Um, What has Calgary done? is the question I'd like to ask because after starting the season five and one and during that five and one stretch, they beat Colorado, Edmonton, Vegas, Carolina, Pittsburgh. We thought they were about to go on a mission since five and since that start at five and one, they've gone six and 12. And 
this Coyotes team, they play hard. They play a 60-minute game night in and night out. Arizona is a very respectable 7-11 on the year. And I give them all the credit in the world with how hard they fought while on this very long road trip. They aren't getting blown out in any games. And these aren't exactly easy Ws for teams playing Arizona. I just don't think Calgary has showed us anything um, to lay this kind of price. Whether it's puck line, regulation, none of that. I'm actually tempted to take a shot with Arizona team total over two and a half. It's at plus 135. That's absurd for a two and a half team total. Um, Arizona's been on a little bit of a run, scoring three plus goals. Since November 21st, Arizona has played six games. They've scored three or more in five of them. And it was against decent teams, Nashville, Carolina, Detroit, Minnesota, and the Kings. Calgary has locked it down defensively and in goal lately at home. Vladar, Vladar seems dialed in, so it worries me a little if Arizona can score three. Possibly keep out, keep an eye out for a live team total for Arizona if it trickles down to one and a half and take a shot there. But I got nothing here. I wouldn't talk anyone out of possibly taking a small shot with Arizona. Even the puck lines at even money, plus money in some spots. Um, one thing that worries me, Vimelka. Not good numbers against Calgary. 0-2, 0.892. 4.51 goals against average allowed 10 goals against calgary both those starts coming last year but i got nothing in this one all right it's a pass for mikey when it comes to arizona and calgary yeah i mean at the money line you take arizona or nothing as far as i'm concerned but i am just i'm just concerned about the air miles you know adding up for that although they were valiant in defeat against vancouver but calgary i still got a i've still got them a decent amount ahead of vancouver in my power ratings even though they've been erratic at times this will be i think tougher and you're right they got just demolished and they've actually really had a tough time against calgary uh head to head calgary's won five straight meetings against uh arizona so uh i think calgary will win but again minus three four i just thought team total a better route i want to go back to the edmonton game just for a second there's one thing i forgot to mention mcdavid and dry and again they do have some injuries right Kane's out fogel's out mcleod's out up front they obviously take a bigger burden offensively when they've got some injuries. Both of them are on multi-game point, multi-game, multi-point streaks. I think McDavid's had four straight games with two points or more, and I think Dreisaitl's had three straight with two points or more. At a lot of sites, you could look right now toward a McDavid and uh, Dreisaitl. Uh, you could do a plus 150 uh prop here for them tonight uh, in terms of over one and a half points both of them same game parlay a lot of sites will allow you to do that you can do mcdavid and dry both two points or more and you can get that at plus 150 i think that's a good one you ride this little streak that they're on they're both on three plus games where they've had two or more points in a row so uh against a washington team with lingren and net injuries on defense probably an opportunity for them there offensively the big guns of the oilers mcdavid uh, and dry side aren't they getting yamamoto back too yamamoto that's a good question um uh, last i, I checked I heard he's day to day that. yeah last i checked he was day to day i think he is back actually good call on that looks like he might be uh back tonight for the uh, oilers where do they have him slotted in here oh they got him on the fourth line but they've got him back uh, in the lineup they've got him with brad malone and dylan holloway all right uh, uh, on the uh, fourth line so it looks like he's ready to rock yeah ready to go back in the lineup tonight against uh washington uh, normally I'd like to take a goal prop with someone like that returning to the lineup. He's got offensive upside, but looks like they're going to start him off on the four, fourth line, which tempers my enthusiasm for a little bit with taking the goal prop uh, on him tonight. All right. A uh, final game for this Monday card, Montreal and Vancouver looks like some money's coming in on the Canucks. They're up to minus two forty now uh, in this game as home favorites against the uh, Canadians uh, and the total sitting at six and a half uh, across the board. I definitely lean over the total uh, in this game. Uh, that's probably the closest I am, I am to uh, locking in something in this game. I would I actually don't mind the uh, Montreal Canadiens uh, team total either. We always talk about how on the road against, you know, when there are these big underdogs on the road, like they were against Calgary, like they were against Edmonton, you're usually able to get two and a half with their team totals for this Montreal Canadiens team. And against uh, Edmonton, they scored three. They got to that team total uh, over the two and a half, and I did have a piece of that against the Oilers. The Montreal, the Calgary game, they did not. They only scored two, but they won the game because Jake Allen was just magnificent, turning aside 45 of 46 Calgary shots uh, in that game for the two-to-one win. 
Uh, we'll see who's in net tonight for the uh, Canadians. Last check, they did not have a confirmed goalie, but hints that yeah, it is confirmed now. Montembeau uh, will get the uh, start. Kind of figured at the end of this uh, out, this Western Canadian swing that they would give the uh, net to uh, Sam Montembeau, and that is indeed going to be the case. Spencer Martin, once again, in net, of course, with Thatcher Demko out for at least four to six weeks. It's become Spencer Martin's team, essentially, uh, in net for the uh, Vancouver Canucks. Uh, Injury-wise for the uh, uh, Montreal Canadiens, Hoffman's still out, and Brendan Gallagher's out, so really no change on the injury front uh, from the uh, last uh, couple of games. I'm probably looking at Montreal team total over two and a half at minus one. Uh, let me just see here. It's minus one. Oh, actually, that's the regulation price. Let me just see the full uh, game price uh, over two and a half minus one thirty three at Pinnacle with the uh, Montreal Canadiens team total. I like that. I think you'll see them, especially off the five three loss to uh, Edmonton uh, play well here in this game. I, I think the tabs team total is definitely worth a look. Probably the full game over as well. Montembeau has had some games where he's actually played okay since uh, get, when he, when he's had the opportunity to start. In fact, more than okay. His last two starts at Columbus, one goal allowed, a 3-1 win for Montreal. And at Chicago, 3-2 shootout win against the Blackhawks. And uh, Montembeau only gave up two goals in that game. So this could be one of those where I do what I did with the Calgary game and the Edmonton game, where I was on a little bit spread across three bets, Montreal team total over, full game over, and maybe a small shot of Montreal as a big dog here in that uh, plus 200 range. I think uh, that's not a bad way to go. It's not like Vancouver's returned home and maintained momentum from that great road trip where they beat Colorado, Vegas, and San Jose consecutively. They've returned home, and they're 1-2, and two, losing to Washington, losing to Florida, both by 5-1 scores, and then life and death to beat this road-weary Arizona team 3-2 in overtime the other night. So I think a Montreal money line, Montreal team total over, full game over six and a half, spread uh, across the board there with those three bets is what I'm looking to do here with this game tonight. Nick, what do you think, Canadians, Canucks? Yeah, just looking at the Can – who are the Canucks to be catching a minus 240 line against anybody, yep. honestly? I mean, you got to go Habs plus 200 here. It's too good of a price. You're definitely getting – multiple points of value here. So I think you got to lay Canadians money line here just from a value perspective. Um, I like what you said about the team total two and a half. It's a good number. Um, you don't know how they're going to play Demko out first game where Martin's really got the net as the starter. Let's see what he can do. Who knows how he's going to, how he's going to do. He's been a little up and down all year. I, I think you lay my, plus you go plus 200 with the Canadians. I think it's a really, really good price on a team that plays hard and St. Louis is going to have them playing hard for sure. Yeah, and off the loss to Edmonton as well. Uh, yeah. So you'll be looking to bounce back. And Spencer Martin's got a little mini uh, Stuart Skinner thing going right now where his form in the last few weeks hasn't been nearly as good as it was early in the season, Spencer Martin. Same thing with uh, Skinner and Edmonton. Overall, the numbers are okay, but lately the form has dipped yeah, just a little just, bit. Just like between you and I, I mean – there is not a man on earth that's lost more money on the Canucks than me this year, honestly. At the beginning of the season, I was betting the Canucks plenty, and it looked like they rounded the corner, they'd come out hot to start the game, oh, this is going to be the game where they turn things around, and then, bam, they'd blow the lead again. I mean, time and time again in October, they blew leads. So I just can't trust the Canucks anymore. They're on my blacklist of betting. I can't do it anymore. So definitely Canadians plus 200 here. Yeah, I might look, though, at a Canuck uh... – Brock Besser has been in the doghouse, had a terrible season. Terrible. I mean, it's just mm -hmm. they expected. He's had a lot to deal with, right? He's had all kinds of purse tragedy, his father passing away, all that. His offense has sputtered. He's been in and out of Bruce Boudreaux's doghouse here in Vancouver. But he did finally score against Arizona. Does that spark him a little bit moving forward? I mean, if you're going to bet Canuck props, you bet Horvat, Kuzmenko, and Mikheyev for the most part. Those are the guys that are scoring for them uh, right now. Montreal, I always say Doc and uh, that Suzuki Caulfield, you pick any one of those three, we know they're always good to be a uh, big time offensive catalyst for Montreal. And don't sleep now on the over, number one overall pick either. Uri Slapkovsky is now getting most ice time he's had all year. He's up to the second line now. He's getting more ice time. He's now at points in back to back games, and he scored against Calgary early in that game against the Flames. He might be the prop guy to target right now. He's getting more ice time. He's getting some offensive confidence going. Uri Slavkovsky from Montreal might be a prop I look at as well tonight. Uh, Mikey, what do you think? Montreal, Vancouver. 
Yeah, locked in Montreal team total over two and a half at a dollar twenty nine last night. I think Vancouver is extremely overpriced. I'm pretty sure they were minus two fifteen, minus two twenty. Now they're minus two forty five. I mean, I'm expecting some news or something that someone from Montreal, one of their top guns, is up because this makes absolutely no sense. These are the types of games that I know Montreal usually shows up for. I like taking a shot with Montreal when they play any of the Canadian teams or any of the top teams in the NHL because they just seem to show up and play. Montreal is three and two this year against Canadian teams. That uh, one of the losses was in overtime to Winnipeg, but they've beaten Toronto. They've beaten Vancouver 5-2. They just beat Calgary 2-1. Um, and obviously they lost the other day to Edmonton 5-3. But both losses to Winnipeg and Edmonton were very close. I wouldn't talk anyone out of Montreal. This was at plus 170 an hour and a half ago when I was putting my notes together. Now you're catching plus 205. Um, it still may make my card. I'm just waiting for everything to be finalized with the lineups. Um, Montreal has played 12 road games this year. They scored three or more in seven of those games. They had issues on the road early on in the season, finding the back of the net, but not recently. They scored three or more goals in five out of their last six road games, and they faced Vancouver 10 times in the last 13 months. They've scored three or more goals in seven out of those 10 games. If you just focus alone on Vancouver's defense, they're allowing an average of 3.8 goals per game. They're the third, that's third worst in the NHL. Only Anaheim and Columbus are allowing more goals. Vancouver also allow, allows a ton of shots, a averaging around 32 a game. Since November 1st, Vancouver has played 16 games. They've allowed three or more goals in 12 out of those 16. I don't see any issues with Montreal scoring three goals tonight, even against Spencer Myron, who's, who's played well for Vancouver. Um, the only... Slight concern of back in Montreal on the money line is Montable's numbers against Vancouver. They're not good. 0.884 save percentage, 3.99 goals against. He allowed 11 goals in those three starts slash appearances. But I'm thinking long and hard on Montreal money line, but I'm sticking with the team total right now. All right, that's interesting. We've got a little dichotomy there. What's going to win out? Is Montembeau's current form, the last few times he's been able to start, he's been pretty good, but you mentioned that against Vancouver. Those are some ugly numbers head-to-head -head against the Canucks. So uh, how is it going to translate for him tonight in net? But uh, I'm going to stick with that. I'm going to go Montreal money line, small shot, Montreal team total over two and a half, kind of split up those two, and then go pretty much the amount that I've got on the team total and the Montreal money line split that entire amount also going to go on over six and a half because I do think we're going to see uh, goals both ways here tonight with uh, the Canadians and Canucks and series history, I believe has trended over as well. Three of the last four have gone over five, four, five, three. And then earlier this year in Montreal, it was five, two uh, in favor of uh, Montreal. So I definitely think we'll see some goals tonight. Great stuff with our guests here, Nick Miranda and Mikey joining us here on the Monday edition of the show. We thank them for joining us. Everyone on YouTube, hit the like button. We appreciate it very much. Check out the Ice Guys Patreon page, patreon.com slash Ice Guys. $10 a month, a daily Ice Guys show betting card posted there. Uh, goalie charts, totals charts, power ratings, and more. And plenty bonus, co more bonus content. Uh, in the new year as well. And if you haven't seen it yet and you're just signing up to the page the last few days, we did bonus video content with the last guest we had, Jay Rosehill, former NHLer, -er, uh, weeks ago. Great segment about fighting in the NHL past and present and its place in the sport. sport. Great, Great stuff. stuff. Uh, so make sure you check that out, patreon.com slash guys for just $10 a month. All right, best bets to wrap up the Monday edition of the show. Nick, we'll start with you. Uh, what do you like for best bet? Yeah, I'm going to go over to Boston and go with Vegas. Moneyline plus 160. Just think it's a great spot with Bruce Cassidy returning to Boston. Golden Knights are going to play hard for him, and I think it's a great price. Boston's a little overvalued here. So Vegas plus 160. Right. All right, Vegas plus 160 against Boston to end the home win streak of the Bruins. Uh, best bet for Nick Miranda. Mikey, uh, best bet. I'm going with Montreal team total over 2.5. Like I just mentioned a few uh, minutes ago, Vancouver – since November 1st, 16 games played. They've allowed three or more in 12 of them. Um, defense, not so good, allowing a ton of shots. I think that's the best play tonight. Montreal team total over two and a half. All right, very good. I like it as well. Montreal team total over two and a half. Best bet for Mikey. My best bet, going back and forth, whether to use the Oilers in regulation or the over in that game. Um, 
I'm going to go with the over here, six and a half minus one. I like them both very close to evenly, but you can only make one uh, bet, a best bet on the show. So we'll go with Washington Edmonton over six and a half minus one ten for me uh, for best bet here for this Monday uh, Ice Guys slate. All right, that'll wrap up this edition of the Ice Guys. We thank everybody for joining us, and we thank our special guests, Nick Miranda and Mikey. We'll have to get you guys on again throughout the uh, season and we're going to try to do that incorporate this is just a you know just the start we're going to try to get more guests on people that watch the show people that bet hockey we're gonna have a lot more former players on the show in the new year uh, as well so uh, lots coming up here on the uh, ice guy show i believe we've got we've got eddie lack on the radar because he's been uh, saying he wants to join us again on the show again in the near future just a question of when it fits the schedule so uh, all that and more coming up here lots of good ice guys stuff to come in the uh, weeks and the months ahead a reminder the ice guys is live seven days a week monday to friday 2 p.m eastern saturday and sunday noon eastern if you can't watch the show live download the ice guys podcast in audio form on all major podcast platforms google podcasts apple podcasts spotify Spotify, Stitcher, iHeartRadio, Amazon Music, and more. Download the Ice Guys podcast when you can't watch the show live. For our special guests, Nick Miranda and Mikey, make sure you follow them on Twitter. Uh, you can follow Nick Miranda on Twitter at nmiranda underscore 19, and you can follow Mikey at Bet with Mikey. Uh, make sure you give them both a follow. I'm Ian Cameron. Have a great Monday night. Enjoy the games and good luck. We'll talk to you again tomorrow on Tuesday for another edition of the Ice Guys presented by National Hockey Now. Thank <sighs> you.